everyone, my name is Tess and I would like to welcome you in my new video. For today I will prepare a step by step process of velvet lips, so let's get started. Now we will start with the pictures before the procedure, so come here and I will show you how to do it. I'm going to use my iPhone 13 Pro Max with the macro lens. I put it here, I adjust it and now we can start to take the photos. I take my client's chin, she opens a little bit her lips and now we can take a beautiful photos. Always remember to take a lot of photos with a lot of different angles because if you take one or two photos and you just you are not sure which one to post it's because you don't have a lot of them. If you have a lot of them you can always try to find the best one even before and then you can do for example a collage or something like that. So I always do a lot of photos before, then videos. Fix your fingers on a macro and you will not be shaky that much. Sometimes you can see that your phone takes the video cooler, but it always adjusts. Yeah, one more. Slow movements. Yeah, perfect. All right, let's go. I think we have a lot of pictures and now we can start with pre-drawing. First things first, we will disinfect the lips properly. Also around the lips. I'm only using basic cotton pad with the disinfection. We will be using corrector from Dior. It's a forever skin correct. I really like it. It's really creamy. And I'm also going to use the brush. I always put a lot of corrector on my hand. I'm using a lot of concealer on the brush. So don't worry, use a lot. You will have a nice and precise clean lines. Fix your client's head. And you can start from here. Never press a lot. Always add a lot of concealer on your brush. And just follow the natural shape of the lips. The lips should be really relaxed because you have to follow the natural shape. If you would fix the lips with your hands, it could happen that you would change the shape and then it would be much harder for you to do it really naturally. If your client has darker skin, it's good to use really, really light concealer because you need to see properly your, uh, your lines. Softly. Soft movements. You are not pressing a lot because if you would press, you could change the shape. So softly moving and adjusting the shape. I really like to go behind the client and always check my lines and angle from behind. So I check it like this. I take my fingers, I push, and I'm trying to look for the different angles. If it's okay, I can leave it like this and I can continue to start with the upper lip. Leave your client's lips a little bit open. It really helps to see the lines better. You want to go from the exact same spot over here. So again, we are flowing the natural line of the lips 
as you can see the line is not exactly straight so what I need to do I need to take a lot of concealer again and now we will fix the line very slowly If you're ready with your part over here, you can move to the other part. I take my client's face, I move it a little bit closer to me and I can start again from the exact same point over here. Lips have to be really, really relaxed and we can continue with this line over here very soft movements you are not pressing a lot you don't want to press a lot if you press a lot you can change the shape of the lips a lot always a lot of concealer on your brush and now we can create the heart over here now we are going to find a middle. Now let's look at the cupid's bow. You always have to follow the natural shape. So, like this and like this. Now we can slowly adjust the lines always remember you shouldn't tattoo where the hair and pore is very very short movements a lot of concealer on your brush and you are adjusting your shape When this part is done, you can move to the other side and just do the same. Very, very slowly adjusting your shape. Just a very, very, very small adjustment. Try to press and try to check if you are in a good skin, if you are not in a skin and if you see some pores or hair, you always have to adjust it properly because you cannot tattoo over it. Now we are going to clean the lines and make them perfect. Only you need a wooden stick, put it to the green soap and fix the shape. And now very, very, very slow movements. Take your two fingers, place them over here push a little bit more down and now make your heart clean there is a few ways how you can check if your pre draw is perfect first what I use I take my finger and I take a bottom lip a little bit more down and I check if my lines are connecting at the same point. I can see they are connecting over here and over here too and it's perfect. Another one, your client can smile. Can you please smile? See, she can smile and you will see if there is some asymmetry or if it's all right. For me, it looks really good, so we can move on. When you're happy with your shape, you can fix it because you don't want to lose it during the procedure. 
I really like to use Johnson powder for fixing the shape because it's really good and I like the consistency of the powder. Let's fix the shape. Ta-da! We are done! For today's procedure, I decided to choose a pigment eye color, nude pink and raspberry, and I can also show you how I mix them together. Before you start using your pigment, don't forget to mix it properly. We are gonna use 10 drops of raspberry. And we are going to use 20 drops of Renewed Pink. Mix it properly. If you want to show the undertone of the color to your client, you can easily show it on a cheek. Most of the time I use Quadron brand, I use Optima needles and Tattoo needles. Normally I use 0.35 diameter, one round line long taper, but if I see that the color is not depositing well into the skin, I change my needle for medium taper. We'll see how, we'll, how it will go today. If we need, we can change it for medium taper and you will see the difference. I'm using Aurora Power Supply. My speed will be 4.5. I like to use short stroke or hybrid stroke machine with a stroke around 2 to 2.5 millimeter and my length of the needle is around 1 to 1.5 millimeter. Fix your pen with the wrap. When you're starting with tattooing, it's really, really important to always tattoo with 90 degree angle and always fix your shape properly. So, you have to stretch to the three different directions, move your client's head and start with very, very soft movements, very short movements, close to each other. like this now we are gonna check if the color is inside of the lips or we need to do it again so yeah it's there and it's beautiful so let's check this again Press and check. I can see that over here it's a little bit more visible than here, so I would like to go again. We will go again. Very short movements. Close to each other and moving slowly up 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 like this let's check this one more time push and clean and you can beautifully see the line now we can continue push over here put your pinky on the teeth and let's continue over here Very, very short movements. Coming back. And now we will check. Push. And we can see it. Now we are gonna 
do the heart and we have to be very very careful because we don't want to change the angle coming back and we will check Push, 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 and you can beautifully see our heart. Place your finger here, stretch your lip, put the pinky over here, and we can continue. You can see beautiful line here. Don't forget to always stretch properly. You have to implant the pigment into the skin evenly. If you're not stretching properly, you are not implanting the pigment properly. It's here and it's amazing. We can continue and we can move to the bottom line. Stretch, take your pinky, push to your side and you can start from the corner. Here I can feel that she has quite dry skin, so the pigment maybe will not be in the skin properly. Let's check this. We can see it beautifully, but the corner is not so good. So I will finish the whole lip and then I will come back to the corner. Now you can move your finger and stretch even better. Very short movements, quick movements, very close to each other and slowly moving forward. we can see the line properly. Moving my client's head, I stretch properly and I'm moving very slowly. Short, short, short. Very short movements. Slowly moving forward. And let's check again. Yeah, the line is there and it's beautiful. Let's finish this outline. Again, very short movements, close to each other, coming back and forth a lot. It's not only one way movement, it's back and forth movement. And let's check this. It's beautiful and it's there. Now we can clean the whole lip with the concealer here, from the concealer here. And then if you're not sure about your outline that you're not seeing it properly, you can put a secondary anesthetic on the lips and then the skin will whiten and you will see everything. If there is some spots, they are softer or lighter, it's not a problem at all to go again and make it a little bit more better and a little bit more visible. I will use secondary anesthetic now and I will show you how the lips will look like in a few seconds. Now let's use anesthetic only on the lip line 
we will leave the anesthetic for a few seconds and then I will show you how it looks like. Now here you can beautifully see our line. You can stretch, you can control and you see it's everywhere. Now it's perfect time to start with the first pass. Now I'm going to start with this corner. When I'm tattooing lips, I always try to stretch exactly like this. You have to stretch properly in order to implant pigment into the skin evenly. So stretch, fix your hands, and we are going to start with very short movements. Quick movements, very short movements, and very, very close to each other. Very short movements, very close to each other. I'm packing the color inside. I'm coming back. And now it's time to clean it with the dry cotton pad. Push the color into the skin and you see it beautifully. Color is beautifully in the skin already. See? And now we can move on. We move only a little bit and we do the same. Quick movements, short movements, very close to each other and you're packing the color inside. I don't put any pressure. I am really, really, really soft. Let's check this again. We will check how much color is in the skin. So, dry cotton pad, push inside, and you can see it's really beautiful. Over here, then you can go back. So when you're tattooing, try to always fix the lip and go very close, quick movements, back and forth. This is how I tattoo brows and this, this is how I tattoo lips very close to each other, back and forth, and my movement is not so airy. When I'm very close to the outline, my movements are much shorter because I need to be very precise I, and I want to also put a lot of color and I want to make it nice and even. And then when I'm moving uh, uh, towards the teeth, over here, my movement is a little bit bigger, but it's still short and it's back and forth. Here you can see quite a lot of dryness. When your client comes with this kind of dryness, you really need to make the lip more hydrated. So when I, I will finish this upper part, then I will put my Trifon cream and I will uh, put foil on top to make the skin softer because here I will not be able to implant the color evenly and not even 
not like not a lot of color so we need to make it hydrate more hydrated and then we can tattoo this part Here we are on the other side of the lips. You can see that I'm very close to the outline now. And I'm doing very, very short movements because I want to be super precise. And now I'm going to the longer ones. Quick and short, no pressure. I'm not pressing at all, no pressure. And we can clean with the dry cotton pad again. We can push the color into the skin. And we can continue. Over here, I can see very small spot where it's not, not a lot of color. Pushing the color into the skin. Moving a little bit over here. Here is a very soft uh, skin, so you have to be very careful, stretch and no pressure at all. Only put color, only, only a little bit. I'm moving my client's head closer to me, stretching the skin properly and continue. So you can see here that the lips are not really, really swollen, but this is a normal process of tattooing the lips. If your lips are swollen, everything is okay. It's just a normal process. Some lips are more swollen, some lips are less swollen, and some lips can be really swollen a lot. But there is nothing wrong with that. We, if, if you know that you're doing the right thing, if you know that you're not pushing a lot, if you're stretching properly, your degree is 90, deg uh, 90 degree angle, your angle is 90 degrees, everything is all right and the swallowing will go down. Now we see there is a lot of dryness and as I said before, I'm going to use trifalan. It's a balm for lips. I'm going to put quite a lot on the upper lip even here and we will put the foil on top and I think we can leave it like this till we finish this part and then when we will go to the upper part to do the second pass then I can take it off and we'll see we will check together if it's good enough so now we will start with the bottom part. I will stretch to myself, away from me and to the side. Stretch a lot. Corners are usually the hardest part on the lips to tattoo because you have to stretch really, really a lot. And sometimes when I stretch like this, for example, for five minutes straight, I cannot even move my hand anymore. I can see there is a lot of dryness here too. So um, probably I will move a little bit over here and then I will put trifalan here too, because I don't think I'm able to put color over here because there is a quite a, a thick dry skin. I'm trying to use shorter movements closer to the outline and mainly I'm trying to tattoo this part over here. Here you can see there is a quite a lot of dryness. So I will do this very close to the outline and then I will put trifalan again over here on the bo at the bottom. 
quick and short movements it's actually still the same uh, I think that the lip tattoo is not really hard procedure uh, the hardest part uh, in my opinion is to really be consistent and to really be patient patience is the most important thing in order to create a beautiful lip tattoo I took off the foil, it's much 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 better, but I can still see some dryness, so I'm trying to massage the spot with the trifalan and I can see that it's working really really well. I'm applying a very very thick layer. Putting a foil. And we will finish the first, or uh, the upper part over here. Let's make it perfect now. You can see some really small empty spaces where I have to put more color. So now I will push the color inside into the skin and I will continue. I will make it more even now and in a few minutes I will change my side and I will finish this part over here and then we can move on to the other side. When I'm working only from one side I'm not really able to have the same pressure everywhere and it's very important to have the same pressure because if you don't have the same pressure you can have really uneven color and then your lips does not look that good um, and also the sw swollen, uh, swollen parts can be bigger some of them can be bigger some of them can be smaller and then it does not really good also for the picture so I'm trying to have the same pressure everywhere and I'm trying to deposit the color everywhere seamlessly. Very good stretch. Working very close to the outline, shorter movements closer to the outline and from the outline longer movements. And again I'm using my dry cotton pad Very good stretch, working very close to the outline, shorter movements closer to the outline and from the outline longer movements. Yeah. Now we are going to start from the corner on the bottom part. It's the same as the upper part, close movements, very short, very close to the other, fast movements and we always checking the color, dry skin is still there, but it's much better than it was before. See that here we had the dry skin too, but I was able to remove it a little bit and I was, a I was able to implant the pigment into the skin beautifully and properly. We'll see how it, how it will go over here. When you're tattooing on a dry skin, you can even hear different sound. It's really scratchy. I think there will be a little bit of color, but here, when I'm working on a dry, um, dry skin, I need to... Um, do it with a little bit of pressure because otherwise I wouldn't go through and I wouldn't implant any pigment into the skin.
Now we are working on the final touches. I'm trying to make it as even as possible. But I already told you that there is a lot of dryness over here, so I'm not able to create such a seamless effect on the bottom. It doesn't matter, it still looks really beautiful. But I am struggling a little bit over here because of the dryness. Anyway, the, the result is beautiful in my opinion. The color looks super natural on her and I cannot wait to show you the healed result. Maybe I will try to do some really short video for you to see everything and then I will post it on YouTube. I'm using Trifon for her lips because her lips are really dehydrated, they are really dry, so I want to make them a little bit more hydrated. Now I'm preparing my lips for the photo. I'm using concealer again and I'm trying to make the lips look more beautiful because uh, sometimes uh, around the outline there is a lot of redness and you cannot see them properly, the lips. But if you add a little bit of concealer around the outline, your lips will pop up and it looks much, much more beautiful. Like this. We moved to the upper part. Right. Open your lips a little bit. Mm -hmm. We already finished the procedure. I'm super happy about the outcome. Let me know in the comments if you liked it too and hopefully to see you in the next video. Bye!